Today we'll be doing a full step-by-step -step tutorial of how to roll options within Thinkorswim. Now, for those of you watching who are not super familiar with what a roll actually is, it is simply closing out your current option while simultaneously opening up a brand new one either further out in time or on a brand new strike price. You could actually do this for a bunch of different reasons, but for the most part you're probably going to look at rolling when you want to manage the risk on a position or take some profits off the table, or even as a way to save a losing trade. But as you can probably tell already, rolling can play an incredibly important role in your trading and you'll definitely want to have the entire process nailed down. Now today I'll be focusing this video specifically on the mechanics of actually doing the roll itself within Thinkorswim. But if you guys would like to understand more about why and when to roll, go ahead and check out my other video either by clicking on the card at the top or by using my link in the description. Within that one I go a lot more in depth about the things you guys might want to actually look at and basically the whole thought process behind when to do a roll. But diving right into a few real life examples, we'll generally be doing all of our rolls right from the monitor page. So looking right here at my monitor page and specifically the activity and positions tab, we can actually see all of my current positions down below. In this case, I am specifically looking at my options positions and for the very first one, let's go ahead and take a closer look at square in this case. Looking here, you can actually see I sold one of the $68 puts that expires on 15 July, which is four days from today. Looking to the right and taking a look at the price I sold it for, you can see I originally sold this for $1.15 and unfortunately it is currently trading for $4.75. So that means that this short put has actually gone against me, that I'm actually down on this position about $357 if I look at the current P&L open. If I were to take a look at the actual price of Square at the moment as well, I can see Square is currently trading for $64.61, which means if I do absolutely nothing and Square stays exactly where it's at, I'm probably going to get assigned 100 shares of Square. Now, in order for me to avoid that, I mean, there are a few different things I could do. I could simply just close out this put option, or I could decide to roll it further out in time and maybe even roll it down if I can. In order for me to actually do that, all I need to do is actually put my mouse right on the put option I want to roll and simply right click on it. For those of you out there using a Mac or using a laptop, you'll probably have to use two fingers to click or hold down command and click if you're on a Mac computer. That's what counts as a right click. But from there, once we actually do that, we can see a little pop-up window appear on the right hand side and you'll see a bunch of different options, but all we want to look at is the one that says create a rolling order. Once I actually put my mouse over that, you can see another little window appears to the right. And what that says is we want to sell one calendar of the square options. All we have to do is go ahead and click on that. And ignore the fact that it says calendar, although that is technically what we're doing, it doesn't realize that we're gonna be closing out our current position and then opening up a brand new one further out. So it's not really a calendar. But you guys can see that as soon as we clicked on that, it did automatically take us to the trade page and it actually built out that order ticket down below. So that's what this red line is down here at the very bottom. Looking at the order ticket a little bit closer, we can actually see what it's saying is we wanna buy back that one square $68 put for this week and then sell a brand new one one week further out in time on the exact same strike. Taking a look at the credit that we would receive, we would actually receive a dollar and 15 cent credit for doing this trade. So for moving this trade a week further out in time, they're going to pay us an additional dollar and 15 cents in credit. But you'll notice that whenever you guys end up doing a roll, it's going to automatically keep you on the same strike price. So in this case, it kept us on the $68 strike and it simply moves us out one additional expiration. Now, if you guys wanted to change that, of course you could. In my case, I said I wanted to try and roll this down if I could. So let me go ahead and change this from 68 to, let's say, 67. You can now see that if I roll it down an additional dollar, I'm now reducing my credit. I'm now only going to get 55 cents instead of that dollar 15. Let's instead say I wanted to roll it out of the money if I could. So in this case, I want to roll it all the way down to $64. And now you can see I would actually be paying to do this trade. Now it's going to cost me 98 cents in debit, now a dollar and three cents. For me personally, I never want to pay to roll out a short option. So what I would personally do is probably look at the expiration date and see how far out in time I have to roll it to get that to be back to a credit. So it looks like in this case, I would have to roll it all the way out to five August in order to get a credit, but I am receiving a dollar 42 in credit. Again, you guys could decide whatever you feel most comfortable with. For me, I'm gonna try and roll it out of the money if I can, and I don't wanna go out any further than 60 days. 
But looking here, if I was actually happy with this, it looks like I'm gonna be rolling it from 68 down to 64. I am gonna be rolling it out almost a month in time. But if I'm happy with that, I would simply hit confirm and send. It's then gonna give me a little confirmation, just confirming exactly what we wanna do. In this case, we're gonna be closing out our $68 put, opening up a new one on the $64 strike. And now that I'm happy with that, we would simply hit send. Taking a look in the upper left-hand corner, you can see that it did fill, so I did fill on this trade. And if I went over to the monitor page, you can now see that I've got the $64 put and the $68 put is zeroed out. But again, the process is fairly straightforward. If you're closing out a single leg option, you simply need to right click on it, create a rolling order, and then sell one calendar. You would then come down and change the expiration dates or the strike prices as you see fit, and then confirm and send, and now you've got the trade rolled out either further on time or to a brand new strike price. Now, doing this on a spread is actually very straightforward as well, and it's pretty much the exact same process. Coming back over to the monitor page, let's actually take a closer look at my PayPal position. Looking here, you can actually see I sold a vertical put spread. I sold the 75 and bought the 70. Just like before, if I wanted to roll out this vertical put spread, all I would have to do is right click on the symbol for PayPal. I would then come over to the right where it says create a rolling order and then select sell one vertical roll on PayPal. So it's gonna be the very top line. The two lines below that would just be if you wanted to roll out a single leg. So in this case, if you wanted to roll out just the $70 put or just the $75 put. In my case, I wanna roll out the entire vertical. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on sell one vertical. Just like before, it's gonna take me to the trade page and then I can see the order ticket right down here at the bottom. So again, the bottom portion is buying back the vertical put spread for this week and then you can see it's putting it on for next week on the exact same strikes. In this case, you can actually see I would be paying to do this trade. You can see the cost of the roll would be actually a debit of 14 cents. Again, for me personally, I never wanna to pay to do a roll. So what I'm gonna do is actually see about rolling this even further out in time. And it looks like I'm not gonna be able to do this for a credit. It looks like I'm just gonna be stuck in this trade. And in all honesty, that's gonna happen sometimes. When you decide to roll a vertical spread, it's oftentimes gonna be a lot more difficult to roll a vertical or a spread of any kind than it is to roll a single leg option. But in terms of mechanics, this is exactly how you would do it. You would simply right click on the vertical spread, create a rolling order, and then select the new strikes or new expiration that you wanted to roll it to, and then the price that you wanted to receive for doing the roll. You would then come down here and select confirm and send, and then actually send the order if you did want to submit it. But hopefully those few examples were enough to get you guys comfortable enough to do it on your own. And be sure to check out my other video covering the why and when it makes sense to roll if you guys did still have questions. But otherwise, have a great rest of your week, guys. Consider hitting that like button on your way out, and I'll catch you on the next one.